Hello, and welcome to the final episode of Songs of the Season. Tommy and I have really enjoyed doing the research on these Christmas carols and learning about the background of all of these. The thing I found most interesting, I think, is that things arise out of a need. And when you think back in the, of the history of our, of our church, of the, the Christian, Christian church, you realize that when the Catholic Church was the only one, they provided everything. And then post-Reformation, there was a time when basically they sang psalms in the services. And then as music got became more prevalent uh, and more complex in society, it worked its way into the church. And so what we have now is the result of that, starting in the early 1700s when uh, Christian music really became a necessity. And another thing I thought about was that hymns became important because most, for the most part they rhyme and considering the literacy of those times it would have been much easier to memorize things that rhyme and so hence we have lots of Christmas carols now. Um, on to the one today, Charles and John Wesley the Wesley brothers that we've heard of all of our life who started the Methodist denomination uh, were very instrumental in so many areas of Christian life. Um, Methodism itself really started in the early 1700s with an attempt to reform the Church of England from the inside. But that really wasn't working so well, so ultimately they did split. But in the meantime, the term Methodism became prevalent because of the way they methodically did their studying of the scriptures. Um, Charles and John Wesley both were ordained ministers as were, was their father. And you probably remember that they went to the Georgia colony, what we think of as Savannah now, the old Oglethorpe colony, uh, to bring Christianity to the colonies. And they felt like they were unsuccessful, so they went home. When they got back to London, they get seriously involved in, in spreading the word, spreading the Christian word, and they ultimately formed the Wesleyan Methodist Church, which, as I had said earlier, was a break really from the Church of England. Um, one of the things I found interesting about it, they were serious about conversion, about faith experiences for their people, and they were extremely serious about helping the needy. Um, and if you remember from O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, the man who did the translation for O Come, O Come, Emmanuel was also, had been a priest, only he had health issues, but his, the outcome of that was he was helping the needy and he was translating um, uh, early Christian music for the current church. Hark the Herald Angels Sing first appeared in 1739 when Charles Wesley wrote it. Um, it was to be a hymn for Christmas Day, and Wesley desired, actually required at the beginning, that it be a big, heavy, pompous kind of music to go with it. By the way, a friend of his by the name of Whitfield helped um, skew the words a little bit to help it fit music that had been, that was found for it. Um, later, though, uh, much later, close to a hundred years later, another music text came along that worked really b better with it. Um, in the 1840s, Mendelssohn, as I say, almost a hundred years later, uh, Mendelssohn wrote a cantata uh, that was celebrating the printing press. And um, one of the tunes out of that cantata lent itself to this text. So William Cummings who was a mus also a musician at that time, adapted Mendelssohn's tune to the text of Hark the Herald Angels Sing that had already been adapted to another tune. So as you can see, things don't come out static. Um, our music, our songs, both the words and the music tend to evolve to happen to come to what we know and think of as having been that way all along. So let's listen to the last portion um, the last verse of Hark the Herald as we complete today's assignment. <laughs> 